Welcome. Thank you for joining us for today's audition workshop. I am Shana Ferraro, the Community Programs Director for Texas Center for Arts and Academics. And I am Paula Fukuhara, the Fine Arts Administrative Assistant for Texas Center for Arts and Academics. And we're going to tell you all about auditions. Today's workshop will help you know what needs to be done before auditions and then what to expect on the day of your audition. Our open enrollment dates are January 13th until February 15th. Now we're going to go over how to prepare and where to find all of the information. Everything we talk about today is easy to find on our website. We will take you through each step so you will know exactly where to look. Start by going to artsacademics.org. Then you can click on the Admissions tab on the top of the right corner. One note to point out on the top of this page is the opportunity to sign up for a campus tour if you have not done so already. Then you can scroll down on the page and click on Start Your TESSA Journey. Now you will be on the page with everything you need to prepare for auditions. First, start by finding the audition requirements that apply to you, which will either be kinder through second or third through sixth. This is referring to the grade your child will be auditioning for. We will start by looking at the K through second requirements, which I will let Paula go over with you. Thank you, Shana. Here you will see our K through second audition requirements. You will notice above the red line that all K through second students audition in all four fine art areas. For this example, we are looking at art requirements. You can see students will use a pencil to draw a still life and will also create an original composition based on a universal theme. You will not find out your universal theme until the day of the audition. Also, a portfolio of your child's work is not needed. This is the score sheet that lets you know what areas the adjudicators will be looking at when scoring your child's artwork. The rubric is what helps you understand what it is required to receive each score. For art, you will see that a student needs to produce all shapes that are seen in the reproduce what is seen section in order to receive a score of four. We will now look at examples for grades third through six. You will notice at the top, it mentions that everyone will need to audition in all four areas as well, just like kinder through second grades do. For this example, we are looking at the dance requirements. You can see the students will be taken through guided exercises, which is what the audition instructional video will contain but they do not need to have anything choreographed in advance. This is a score sheet that lets you know what areas the adjudicators will be looking at when scoring. The rubric then helps you to understand what is required to receive each score. For dance, when the adjudicators are watching the video and looking at the student's coordination, we can see that a student who performed some synchronized movements with multiple parts of the body, but also had several mistakes, would receive a two. And a student who performed all synchronized movements with multiple parts of the body and only had a few mistakes would receive a four. Remember that all of this is referring to the student performing the combination that they will learn through the audition instructional video. All of these documents will help you to know what to expect from your audition. We did not talk about theater or music, but both will have a requirement to memorize a song, monologue, or poem in advance. You will be able to find samples of these on the website as well. The audition itself will be given to you in the form of an audition instructional video for each fine art area. These videos are made by the same instructors who would have hosted the audition in person. This way, they are still able to talk to you throughout the process and demonstrate if needed. 
Here is one example of how you might receive an instructional video. This document gives you a few notes as well as providing a link to the video and the playlist that is needed for when you record your video. In this example, the department put together a slideshow with details and some of the slides include links to videos for you to click on. No matter what, we encourage you to read through everything and watch every video beginning to end and do not rush. Each audition will contain multiple parts. Although you will have a designated amount of time, it will be enough for you to go through the whole process and not miss anything. Another great resource back on this page on our website, down at the bottom, is our list of accepted ISDs. Your home address needs to be inside one of these in order to be able to apply for TESA. Speaking of that application that you will turn in during our open enrollment period, which remember is January 13th until February 15th. Once we receive your application, you will be assigned a specific day and time for each audition. And even though it is online, it is during that day and time that you will be given access to your audition instructional videos. At that same time, you will be given an audition number. From that point on, all communication will be using the audition number and not the applicant's name. This will be most important when labeling and submitting your videos. Each audition will be given a designated start time, which is when you will gain access to your instructional videos, as well as an end time, which is when you will need to have your videos submitted by. I am now going to let Paula talk to you about what's going to happen during those times. Thank you, Shana. These are the steps you will take to access your instructional videos. First, you will receive a Google Classroom invite in your inbox from me. It will look like this. Now click Join. You will then see this screen. It's the home page of the Google Classroom. You will see an assignment already posted in your classroom stream. If you click Classwork at the top of the page, you will be directed to this screen. Now click View Assignment. Here you will be able to actually open the document that contains the instructional video. Once you click this document, video, or PowerPoint, you will see another window open with the instructional video. This is when you will start going through the audition process. All the audition information and links will be found here. And just remember, this is a sample, so your assignment will look slightly different from this. Go back to this screen after completing your audition using the instructional video and upload the audition videos as unlisted on YouTube. Here's where you need to upload a YouTube link of your audition video. Speaking of YouTube, let me show you how to do this. Step one is creating a YouTube channel. Step two is how to upload your video as unlisted. This is the home screen of YouTube. In the top right, you can see a little video camera icon. Click that and a drop down will become available. Now click upload video. If you do not have a YouTube account already, it will lead you to this screen, the how to create a channel screen. You will need to select one of the two options listed I've decided to use a custom name. That will then bring me to this screen where you can insert a name for your channel. Feel free to name your channel whatever you would like. Be sure to click the checkbox below your name and then click create. This screen now shows your channel as created on YouTube. It will lead you to this screen, which shows your channel information and videos. Now it's time to click create then upload video. It will pop up at this box where you can click select files. Then a dialog box will open and you can find your file on your computer. As you can see, my video is labeled Audition Zero Grade 3, which is how you will need to label all of your files. If you have more than one video, then at the end of the title you put a comma, video one, two, three, etc. Most auditions will require more than one video. For now, if you have multiple videos, only do one at a time. 
Now you can click open. You will then come to this screen. It is important you keep the same file name as you originally named it in the beginning. Click next. This screen will pop up and you can just click next. Here is why you would choose to upload your video as unlisted. This is important because this means no one else has access to your video unless you share it with them. Then click save. Now your video is posted and you can now copy the video link at the bottom of this box. This is the link I will now show you how to upload to your Google Classroom. Once you click close, it will lead you here. Now you will see your video posted on your channel. Now you will want to go back to the Google Classroom. Click Add or Create in the Your Work box at the top right. A drop down menu will appear and you will want to click Link. This is where copying the video link from YouTube comes in handy. You will need to paste the link and then click Add Link. Now you will see your video link in the work, your work box. If you have more than one video, repeat that step until you see all of your videos in your work box. You will follow the same pattern as we did when uploading the first video. Once you have uploaded all of your videos, you will want to click Turn In. Before clicking Turn In, you will want to verify all of your videos are correctly titled. This is the last chance to get it right. And once you're ready, click Turn In. It will still want you to verify that you're really ready to turn it in. If so, click Turn In again. You will see the Your Work box marked as Turned In in the top right to confirm you have in fact turned in your assignment. And now Shana is going to take you through a few tips and tricks on how to record a successful audition video. Thank you, Paula. That was really helpful information. I want to give everyone a few tips and tricks to help you record the best video possible for your student. We know you will not be able to have the perfect filming setup, and please know that will not affect the score at all but we would love to help you make sure we are able to see all that your student has to offer. Try to plan for a calm and quiet house. Pick a location in the house that provides you with the space and lighting that you need. Decide in advance who will be in charge of filming and who will be able to help you create your YouTube link that Paula just spoke about. Know which devices you will use to film, which one will play the video, and if you need an additional one to play music. Many times you cannot play music from a device at the same time you are using it to film. You will be able to go through this video with the screenshots of Paula explaining how to create an unlisted YouTube video, or you can watch a tutorial video that we have on our website. Either way, we suggest you make a practice video ahead of time to give you an idea of the process and also to see how long it takes. Downloading the videos can sometimes take up to 30 minutes. This is the link on our website to the tutorial video. And just another reminder that you will only want to use the student's audition number and not their name when labeling your video to submit. But after that, you can celebrate because your audition will be done. We will send result letters the third week in March. Thank you for attending the TESSA Audition Workshop.